In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the E6B flight computer to calculate unknown winds aloft. In order to do this, you'll need four pieces of information. The first is the true course. Remember that the true course is the heading that you're going to fly when you use your plotter on the sectional chart and is referenced to geographical north. For this reason, it's very important that you find the true course value as you're making your flight plan on the ground and you take your time to measure these values very accurately. When you're in the air, you're not going to be able to pull out the plotter and measure the true course on the sectional chart in time to make any use of it. And if you do, it's not going to be an accurate measurement. The next thing you're going to need is the ground speed and the true air speed. And I'll have a link to both of those tutorials over on the side. The last thing you're going to need is the true heading. The true heading is the easiest thing to measure. All you have to do is look at the heading on the directional gyro and then subtract out the magnetic variation and you have the true heading quite easily. Now I'm going to show you how to find the true course. Here I've got two points on this leg of the flight plan. The first one is Carroll County Regional Airport, which is Delta Mike Whiskey, and the other one is just at the start of this lake. The distance between the two checkpoints is 8 nautical miles, so it's not too far apart, nor is it too close together. And if we look, we'll see that the heading is 12 degrees with respect to geographic north, which is pointing straight up on this chart. And that differs from magnetic north, which has a 11 degree west variation. And that variation can be seen by the Westminster VOR for the zero degree radial, which is a little bit off to the left as opposed to being straight up, which is geographic north. So next, let's see how to find the true heading. Now let's find the true heading. In order to do this, all we have to keep in mind is that we're going to be flying from Carroll County Airport to the bottom of this lake. I'm going to point the nose of the aircraft left or right, depending on how the unknown winds are affecting my flight path, so that at the end of the day, my airplane will be tracking directly to the bottom of this lake. It might not be pointing exactly at the lake, and the variation in what my aircraft knows is pointing, despite the fact that I'm going straight to the lake, is because of the wind. So get the aircraft in such a way that it's taking you directly to your next checkpoint. Once you have that established, simply look and see what the DG or directional gyro is telling you in terms of the heading. For the G1000, we can see that the heading is 028. We can also look here on a more classical Bendix King mechanical directional gyro, and we see the same thing. Keep in mind it's important for a mechanical directional gyro that you recenter it if it starts to drift because of mechanical losses due to friction. So this is our magnetic heading. What we want to find is our true heading. Remember that we've got 11 degrees variation to the west. East is least, west is best. Subtract for east variation, add for west variation. So we've got 028. So what we'll do is take 028. We will subtract away 11 degrees because we're working backwards. And that gives us a true heading of 17 degrees. So just in case that confused you in terms of east is least and west is best, 17 degrees, west is best, Add 11, that takes you to 28 or 28, and that's the magnetic heading, 028. So again, our true heading in this case is 17 degrees. Now let's solve this example. The first thing we're going to do is align our true course to the top of the true index marker. In this case, when we did our flight plan with our plotter intersectional, we determined the angle to be 12 degrees. So 12 degrees goes on the top. Next, we'll align the grommet with the ground speed, which we determined was 120 knots in the air. Next, we're going to plot the difference, the angular difference, between our true course and what we found our true heading to be. 
In this example, our true heading was 17 degrees when we looked at our DG and subtracted out magnetic variation. And our true course, when we looked at our sectional on the ground, was 12 degrees. So the difference between 17 and 12 is 5. So what we'll do is we'll note that 17 degrees is to the right of 12 degrees. And so we'll move 5 units out to the right of the center line. And we'll put a tick mark which lines up with the true airspeed of 115 knots. So here's 115, and there's 5 degrees variation to the right. Next, all we have to do is rotate the card until the dot lines up with the center line. Now that we have it lined up with the center line, we can read the magnitude of the wind velocity by noting that it's 10, 11 units up from the grommet, and the angle of the wind is given by the true index, which is 123 degrees. So the winds are 11 knots at 123 degrees, and it's that simple.